Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. I'm now well into the movement of coral from this 29 gallon soft coral reef into the new Red Sea Reefer XL 425. And I'm gonna reach a point where I'm going to be leaving a lot of this behind. I, I know it for sure. There are so many pests on these corals. Ugh, vermitted snails that have accumulated over the years of having this tank. And it's taught me that I need to have a coral quarantine for my new system. So henceforth, anything that comes in that I'm going to put into the new tank is going into quarantine first. I am very tired of getting coral that's infested with oh, vermitted snails with um, various pests and diseases and I'm going to put a stop to that. I'd love to be able to get a large piece of this colony of sunny days, but they're being encroached on by those purple polyps and I have no idea how far into the colony they've spread. So I'm going to have to do my best to try and get whatever I can off this rock and I may have to content myself with starting over again with a small piece. Another thing I'd love to be able to save is this Gorgonian. It really isn't thriving here and I wonder if it's because the base is being overgrown by both the sunny Ds and the purple polyps. I won't know till I pull that rock out of there whether I can remove it. And in spite of my best efforts, these evil green polyps have managed to reappear in here. In spite of me trying to obliterate them every time I saw one, they're just hanging on. So there's no way these rocks are getting anywhere near the new tank. And these little zoanthids with the green skirts, I have another frag of those and they're called hippie zoos when I bought them. Um, the ones up on the rocks are going to be sacrificed. I can't get those clean. And this little frag has a couple pests on it, but I'm pretty confident I can clean it up. I really like these green zoanthids, but you can see the rock is infested with red bubble algae. So I'm hoping I can at least remove a few of the zoanthids so that I can take them over to the new tank. And moving along through here, I also have several other little frags that I've removed from the rocks where I could, and I hope I can get them uh, to the point where I'm confident they're gonna be clean enough to move over. The reason I wanna keep a lot of these is because of the variety of colors. I tend to have a lot of orange, whoop, there's an Aptasia, <laughs> on my favorite combo frag, of course, uh, with the purple, orange, and green, yellow ones. Um, but I want to maintain the variety of color, and that's one of the reasons I'm going to do my best to save as many as I can. Another challenge are mushrooms and humas that are growing on the rocks. I created this little mushroom wall, which turned out really nicely. I'm very pleased with it. The downside is I have no clue, even if I can get some of these mushrooms off of here, and I don't know uh, how I'm going to get the humas off. So. It'll be interesting to see what I can do with these without damaging them. And this Japanese finger leather, I have a frag of this in the new tank already. So the rest of it, I'm going to turn into frags and trade them in to the local fish store because they don't have a lot of unusual leathers there. So that's a bit of a summary of some of the highlights of the challenges I face with this tank, getting it dismantled, trying to save as much as I can because it is alive. I really don't want to destroy it. And if it's so infested with pests, then I might have no choice. A few days later, and I've managed to clean up quite a few of the zoanthids that were on the frag rack. You can see here that they're open wide, most of them, and looking very good. This is about 12 hours after they were put in here. On the bottom, I have a bunch of small pieces, polyps that came off the main frags during cleaning. And I put them on little pieces of rock and they look like they're doing really well. So I should be able to use them. So I have to be happy. This is about four hours work and I really am satisfied that these are going to be able to go into the new tank and do well. It took a while, but I finally psyched myself up to where I feel like I can remove this pally colony and do a really good job cleaning it up and boy does it need cleaning up there are vermetted snails absolutely everywhere on here they're they're just horrible there are also a couple of recordia here on the rock 
and I'm a little bit concerned that I won't be able to get them off, but I guess I'll see. So that's my next job. This Gorgonian is doing really well and actually has new branches coming up from the base. I'm trying to wait for the polyps to close up on their own, but I may just have to go ahead and pull it out of here and I can hardly wait to get it over into the new tank. And this yellow zoanthid rock with the green mushroom fastened to it has been out of the tank several times to have purple polyps scraped off. They were completely covering the back half of the rock, out of sight when looking from the front of the tank. So I've been working at it to try and remove those things and I think I just have to keep monitoring it. There is no way I'm moving it into the new tank until I'm 100% sure those things are absolutely gone. You probably also noticed that the frag rack is gone and that's because I was able to clean all of the zoanthids that were on the frag rack and remove it from here, clean the glass and at least feel as if I'm taking care of this tank a little bit. It had really been bothering me over the past couple of weeks that it was getting so messy. And all of these bits of rubble in the front corner had at one time zoanthids on them but now some of them are so overrun with pests that I don't even know what's on them anymore. We've got bubble algae, vermetid snails, purple polyps, uh, you name it. So I'm gonna have to go through all of them and see if there's anything I can salvage. And another example of an infestation of purple polyps. Can I save it? I guess I'll find out. And going on a little tour, I believe these are gobstoppers. And then right beside those, I have bumblebee zoanthids. Beautiful blue with yellow. Really, really attractive. But can, again, can I save it? Who knows? The Recordia are doing really, really well. And I already have a spot picked out for them. I think the rock that they're on is quite clean. And these are really attractive zoanthids when they're open. They've been horribly affected by all of those vermetid snails on there, and there could even be something else going on. This has gotten really bad just over the last couple of days. This update has been a long time coming because I've had my hands in the tank. I've been so busy trying to get things cleaned up and moved over. I hope the next update will be showing how everything looks in the XL425. Thanks for watching.